Hello and welcome to our channel. I'm Tanya and this is my canine companion, Dexter. I feel like with this upcoming video, I should be whispering because we're gonna be talking about canine massage and I'm gonna give you a few pointers on how to use canine massage to help calm and relax your favorite dog. If you're new to the channel, thank you for joining us. Please hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And if you're back, we appreciate your support and we're glad to see you. And normally when I do this, we want a zen feeling where it's quiet and calm and relaxing. So hopefully my chit chatter won't get Dexter too excited. First, canine massage can actually be used for medical conditions with the help of your dog's veterinarian. You always want to speak to your dog's veterinarian before starting any kind of physical therapy exercises with your dog, even canine massage, if your dog has any underlying medical conditions that need to be addressed first. So for Dexter, when he was a puppy, I did a lot of massage to calm him down and also it was a good time for me to look for lumps and bumps. So while I was touching Dexter and doing a little massage, I was actually looking to make sure he was healthy, that we didn't have any bumps, that his skin was good, that nothing was abnormal. And by doing that on a regular basis, and for him as a puppy, it was daily, would give me the opportunity to stay ahead of anything, to make sure that I go, oh, wait a minute, that bump wasn't there yesterday, or that bump is the size of a teeny, teeny little speck, but maybe in a week, that bump is the size of a pea or a nickel. And in those cases, off to the vet we go. Anytime I see something growing really fast, I'm gonna get in there, make sure that we evaluate it, and make sure everything's okay. As Dexter aged, we also found out he has Chiari malformation, which is a disorder in his skull. I'll put some information below in the link description to tell you all about that. But because of that, he actually isn't one who loves being massaged and touched in that sort of way anymore. So I always wanna encourage you to make sure that you are always listening to your dog and if it feels like they're uncomfortable or they're not enjoying something, unless your vet told you otherwise, stop. And if your vet told you to keep it up, make sure you're doing it properly. Make sure that you're actually doing what they showed you. Or if they didn't show you enough or you didn't understand it, go back and ask them to show it to you again because you want to make sure that you're doing it properly. But there's always workshops or books that you can pick up to even learn more. But today what we're going to do is we're going to work on just a little bit of some massage and some touch. And again, when you have a young puppy, I want to do this to make sure that they're learning how to be touched and handled. So as you can see, Dexter, 12 years old, pretty zen, even though I'm talking to the camera. Although a lot of times when I'm talking to the camera, he gets excited because he thinks it's training time. But he's learned how to to chill and how to relax and it's again because of this massage and this touch stuff that I did for him as a puppy so if you have a squirrely puppy in the near future I'll actually show you some puppy videos because there's going to be a friend puppy coming into Dexter's life not in my home but a friend so stay tuned for that so the best time to work on massage with puppies or young dogs is when they're already kind of quiet so the first thing that I like to do is I actually like to zen out the atmosphere so again not chit chatting like I am now not bright lights over here but set the mood so a little dark quiet I actually like to use some canine um, calming music I'll put that link below on my favorite CD that I use over and over and over with success so that we can can condition our puppies and our dogs that that music actually means the time to be calm and settled because that will again give you the opportunity to go hmm I need to settle my dog what are some of the tools well boy when I put on that CD and I work on some massage my dog has learned that it's settle time so I can use that to my advantage so I'm gonna pick a time when I have a young puppy that we're already going to be a little calmer than normal so after our exercise after after the day when we're getting ready to take our siestas that's a perfect time to start so I'm just gonna start with gently and it's gonna be extra gentle for Dexter because again he doesn't love love being touched so the video might be shorter and sweeter than I expected but all we're gonna do is we're gonna start touching them <laughs> 
which is, are you gonna go it over? Oh, what a good boy. And I do, when I'm talking about massage and, and our puppies and our dogs enjoying this and having them relax, and I'm not thinking about physical therapy for my dog, I like to let them do whatever it is that they're comfortable doing. So if he wants to roll over on his side, I'm gonna actually take that opportunity to go, fine, then I'm gonna go ahead and work on this side. And I'm kind of thinking about touching and warming up those muscles. I tend to kind of like to start on one spot and work down. Remember Dexter's head over here has the, has the malformation there. So I'm not gonna do too much there, but with your healthy dog, what I like to do is you see too, he, he looked up because I don't think he really wants me to do that. So I'm just going to kind of mimic. I'm not going to actually touch Dexter. So I start up here by the forehead here. And I'm just going to do some circle and kind of rub. The light touch, not hard. You just want to keep it nice and soft. And you're going to circle and kind of work your way. And you can go right, right, right here in those eyes. And you're going to work your way down. So we're gonna, again, pretend like you're touching your dog and you're gonna work your way down. And it doesn't have to be long. You can look at how much time you have and you can work on going faster, slow hands. So I think about when I touch my dog, if I want my dog to be calm and relaxing, I want those touches to be kind of calm and soothing. If I want my dog to be excited, like I'm getting ready to go in the agility ring and I want him to kind of pump up, then I kind of, you know, whoo, you know, but I want to be calm and relaxing. So calm, deep circles and touches. So we're going to kind of start here. And as you're working your way down, I want to get the base of those ears back here. So again, for Dexter, I'm not going to do too much touching, but you're going to go ahead and, and rub the base of those ears. You're going to work your way and you can go slower than this. I just want to make sure that you can get some good points here in the video. And you, you know, I'm not touching you, Bubby. Again, listen to your dog. He's like, I really don't want my, my head touched. And the other thing to think about is if your dog normally likes this and you do this, and then all of a sudden, he's like, don't touch me there. That's a, you know, I'm gonna take a deeper look. I'm gonna look to see what it looks like tomorrow. How are we doing? If I'm still not seeing a change, that's another vet visit for me. You know, I wanna go, what's going on? Why is it different, okay? And we did, with Dexter, when he did used to be like to be touched a little more, I would notice that back here. So if I started to touch him back here, he would kind of look at me like not a, not an evil like a snarky look, which is still again them telling you something's wrong, but just like hi, hello. And when we went to the vet, maybe a few we were he was scheduled for his um, physical therapy vet. She found out you know he was a little tight back there. So that yeah, again him telling me not quite comfortable back there. So. A little massage here and when you get to this part of the neck what I tend to pretend like um, his head's here his neck's here what I like to do is just kind of like us kind of a little, little kind of rub you know kind of work that way there again for Dexter we're not going to touch that part little rub over here I might have to do another demo with the dog who likes to be rubbed huh but I think he can get the idea and then up over the shoulders a little rub again and then I would work my way I'm barely touching Dexter you can go deeper with your dog but still light touch work our way down and we're just going to kind of gently rub work our way down to those shoulders and I do have some other videos too on some stretching videos um, from my other YouTube channel raising your pets naturally so I'll link those in the descriptions as, as well those are actually some stretching for his physical therapy that we we are doing on a regular basis and we're just gonna rub down here can you see his arm? You can't really see his arms. <laughs> but around his shoulders, up to that elbow. You're thinking about his whole body. You're going down there. And if I'm using two hands here, again, I'm feeling lightly. Do we, you know, uh, uh, is everything okay? Do we have any lumps? Don't miss those toes. So go ahead and go down to those toes. You can go to those little jelly pads down there and do a little massage there. That's a good boy. It's a good way to work on handling those feet. Work your way back up again slower. Go down to his back. And again, watch your dog. Make sure that they're comfortable. Good job. Good job, buddy. And you're just warming and loosening those muscles. Good job. You can talk to them. If you have a puppy, you can give them a, a treat here and there. With Dexter, I tend not to bring out too much food because he gets excited. 
we're shooting a bunch of videos today and we're starting with these videos without food <laughs> and then we do our training videos next because once he sees the food and let him stretch once he sees the food then he wants to start working and so again you're starting here you're working your way down and you're just doing massage don't forget the butt and then the back leg good job buddy warming everything up yeah, so go up, boy, and work your way down. Make sure you get that base of the tail. You won't want to forget any of their body parts. Okay, and then you would have them turn over and get the other side. I'm going to see if I can get him, see, and see, he's even calmer now, even though he doesn't like to be love, love, love being touched with a whole bunch of, of touch and pressure. He hasn't left. Right? So that always tells me I never keep my dog making them do something unless it's something I have to do that the vet's making me do, which I haven't had that issue. But I always want to make sure my dog can leave. So I'm not restraining him. He's not forced to stay here. He's not on a stay. So I don't tell them to stay because if I've taught my dog a really good stay, they're going to stay no matter what, even if they don't like it. So I want to know that he knows that he can move if he wants and he can leave if he wants. So when we started this video, even off camera, I never told him to down and stay. I never even told him to down. But, you know, he, again, conditioning. He knows that we're going to do some massage and some stretches on his yoga mat or that we're going to do some, you know, practices, some of his fitness exercises. So he kind of goes here and he crashed out. The yoga mat conditions him that this is where we're going to be and we're going to do something here. But it's also really important if you don't have carpet, we have carpet, which is might not be as great for cleaning, but it's better for the dogs because they walk with their nails, which is like cleats. So they struggle more on hardwood floors. So if you have slick hardwood floors, those types of floors. When you do anything like that, you definitely want to get a yoga mat. Um, and I'll, I'll give a link to our fancy little yoga mats down in the description or one from the regular store or even a carpet runner. Um, you want to make sure that whatever you put on your slick floor won't slide because you don't want to be having your dog stand on a, something like this and then it just slides underneath them. So you need to make sure that underneath it has some sort of grippy texture. Okay, so there. So he went back to sleep, right? <laughs> I needed your face. Ready? Okay, so one more part of their massage. Ready? I'm never gonna, you never want to force your dog, push them into a sits or anything like that. You don't want to do that with anything for their body or their well-being. All right, so we want to get that front of that face too. So you want to do a little massage. Let's see if you kind of want to get in the way. Massage here. I'm not holding him down here. Underneath the eyes. Over here. This is really good for calming dogs too that are nervous. Good job. I used to do this with my golden retriever. Again, he doesn't necessarily love his head prep. Could be a little stress yawn. He was always a chest rubber. So we can come over here. Here we go. There we go. Get those front of those legs again. And if you're doing it right and your dog is enjoying it, likely he's going to go fall asleep. And that's perfect. That gives you the opportunity to go, okay, take a nice little siesta. I'm going to get a little work done over here. So hopefully you enjoyed this video on how to start some home massage with your dog. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click the bell icon and you'll be notified every time we upload a new video. And remember to pause and enjoy life. And Dexter and I will see you in the next video. Oh, there he is. He's like, did you have a snack? Where's that snack? I only had one, Dexter. Bye-bye.